Hi, this is Quinlan, and it is a very bright and sunny April 15th up here on Mount Iwate. This is my first time being up here in about five and a half months or so. I have been away for more than a month guiding in what's called the Golden Route, sort of the greatest hits of Japan. Kyoto, Nara, Tokyo, Hiroshima, some other places like Takayama, Matsumoto, Yurenaka. And they are beautiful, and it was nice to show around groups of about 12 to 15 people around those places. I just got back yesterday, and so of course the first thing I was going to do is run up this uh, volcano and reacquaint myself uh, with this area. Basically, I was guiding people on a two-week tour of the places that I just mentioned, and I did the exact same tour twice with two different groups of people. Hence, it was a little over four weeks. I thought that I was going to be able to bring a camera with me, which I did, and film some places in Kyoto, Nara, these areas that I'm not usually visiting, and share them with you. But it was just so exhausting to be there and just to be organizing, keeping everything straight, planning everything, researching the history I need to so that I can explain to everybody that I was just so exhausted I had no energy left for filming. First time I'm really turning the camera on again is now here when I'm back. I do have one piece of advice for all of you who are thinking about visiting Kyoto, Nara, places like that, and that is to do stuff at night if you can. For example, the Fushimi Inari Taisha, that most famous of all fox shrines with the tunnels of Vermilion Torii gates, is basically just as busy as Shinjuku Station uh, at rush hour. It's ridiculous. However, if you go back after 9 o'clock at night, they do have lights on. It is just magical to go there at night. And no, I didn't actually do that. I was too tired at night, busy writing reports, organizing receipts, doing all those things that you have to do when you're guiding. But I advise a couple of the guests that I was guiding in their free time to go there at night. And they went there at night and took some amazing photos and had just a fantastic experience. And I believe this is the only saw a handful of people, most famous shrine maybe in the world. And it was empty, 9.30, 10, 10.30 at night. They went all the way up to the top and walked around and back. And so I think for certain places where they don't lock the doors, that is great. Unfortunately, places like Kiyomizadera Temple, another really famous temple in Kyoto, they, they lock that up after a certain time. I think it's 6 p.m. And so you can't just go there at night, unfortunately. One other tip for Kyoto is that it's really walkable. As long as you're going anywhere in the center of the city, you don't even need to bother with the buses, the trains. If you've got uh, time, you can just walk pretty much everywhere. Of course, if you're going to areas in the far north and west, like say to the bamboo forest in Arashiyama, or up to Kinkakuji and Ryoanji, sure, you're going to want to take a bus to get up there. But a lot of stuff, whether it's going just from Kyoto Station to Gion or Shijo, you can just walk up the river. It's a beautiful walk, and it is a great way to see little areas of the city that you wouldn't normally. If you are going to use the buses and the subways, you may have heard that they got rid of the all-day bus pass um, for the non-JR buses in Kyoto because they were just getting too crowded. However, there is still a pass you can get for 1,100 yen that includes all of the buses and the subway system. And so you can buy that pass and then get all over the place during one day. Of course, they also have those welcome Suica cards that have a little picture of the sakura flowers on them. And if you can just get one of those, they're good for a month and that just makes everything convenient. You don't really have a savings on that, but getting those IC cards and just being able to tap into everything whether it's a bus, a JR train, the Hangyu line, or any other line, that just makes it so much easier. One of the biggest pains about traveling around through big cities is having to calculate how much you owe. And so if you can just take your IC card and boop, and get in and out, and then just charge it everywhere you need to, um, even if it's uh, not as cheap as one of those all-included one-day passes, it's still so worth it. Right now, Kyoto is incredibly crowded. The crowds are just just nuts. It's it's really hard to even find a restaurant to eat at in central Kyoto near the station. It is really ridiculous. And so you gotta be braced for the crowds. You wanna get to a place, go there early in the morning because almost any tourist destination, whether it's Nijo Castle, Kinkakuji, the Golden Temple, Ryoanji, Kiyomizadera, any of these places, there are just ridiculous 
ridiculous lines by around 10.30 or 11 in the day and that just lasts all the way through the mid late afternoon. It makes sense to get an early start, which maybe you already knew, but it just reinforced that on this trip. And the other thing for a few places that are open at night, like that Fox Shrine with the torty gates that just make a tunnel, it makes sense to do that at night. It's much more atmospheric then. And if you show up at like 8.30, 9.30 at night, you can walk up there until 11 p.m., come back down after midnight. And even if the trains aren't running anymore, it's really easy to just walk back to Kyoto Station from the Fushimi Inari Shrine. And that is the best way to experience it. It's so much more atmospheric, maybe even spooky then. The other thing that I learned is that the rail pass is really no longer a great deal. And it also makes booking everything more difficult if you're using that JR rail pass. It's famous, and I'm sure you've already heard that they um, doubled it. They just jacked up the prices pretty um, high on it. When you're using the rail pass, in order to make any reservations, you have to line up in a huge long line in most cases to talk to a JR staff member behind um, a window in one of those JR offices. And in any sort of large station, whether that's Kyoto Station or Ueno or Shinjuku, you could wait a half hour, 45 minutes, and you have to do that every single time you book a reserved seat on any JR uh, Shinkansen bullet train that you're going to take. If, however, you're just getting tickets normally, which with how weak the yen is right now, it's probably not bad, depending on what country you're from. Then you can just go up to a machine and you can switch it into English and just get a reserve seat and you can book it up anytime in advance, sometimes even on the same day, but for the peak you know, cherry blossom soccer season, you do probably wanna book as far in advance as you can. But still, you don't have to wait in line for it. You can just do it all on the machines and it is easy. You can put it in English. It's so much better than lining up the windows. The other thing that my guests who I were guiding over the last month often remarked at is how hard it was to find trash cans. And so if you are going to travel to Japan, you're gonna to have to be ready to carry your trash back with you to your hotel in a lot of circumstances. Sometimes you can find a convenience store, uh, which some of them, but they got rid of in the more crowded areas. But in smaller areas, the convenience stores always have recyclables and trash uh, bins that you can use. But the lack of bins in big areas is really marked. And so I think instead of struggling and looking for them, I think it's a better idea just to, you know, you have your little day pack with you probably if you're traveling. So just have a plastic bag or a little trash bag with you and just carry your stuff back with you to your hotel and just be prepared for that psychologically. So you always have a bag so you don't have to have like, like a dirty wrapper or something loose in your backpack, but you can just put it that in your little trash bag. However, bathrooms are so much easier to access here. Of course, everyone knows how beautiful and clean the bathrooms are in Japan. In fact, a lot of people have seen this movie, Perfect Days. I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard it's amazing. It's all about a guy who's cleaning some of these novelty bathrooms around uh, part of Tokyo near the Sky Tree. Um, it's supposed to be a great movie. I, I intend to see it soon. But even knowing that, the guests who I was guiding, which were mostly older British people, remarked on just how nice it was that you could access bathrooms for free just about everywhere, and they were always clean. Even public restrooms near large tourist destinations were largely pristine. They weren't <laughs> disgusting at all, and they all have those uh, lovely shower toilets. And they commented how, yeah, yeah, in France and some place you can get a bidet, but it's kind of weird. You have to do this weird shuffle to uh, get from the toilet to the bidet to use it in France, whereas here it's all on the same seat. So it just makes it that much nicer. You have to worry much less if you're someone who drinks a lot of coffee and needs to use the bathroom as often because there are bathrooms everywhere and uh, they're nice and they're free. And of course, I have to say that I really wished I could have taken these guests over the last month more off the beaten track up to somewhere like Northern Japan or even Shikoku or Hokkaido. We really just were on the main tourist drag and that was nice and maybe it is a great trip for first time visitors to Japan to sort of uh, check off all the really famous places, but it would be nice to have been able to show them places in my backyard and to introduce them to more authentic experiences. In big cities, the people are often nice, but they're just so used to seeing tourists now that um, I've noticed a change in people over the last 20 years, at least in the big cities. They are just uh, sort of more normal big cities. They're more likely to ignore tourists and just behave like people who are used to being around tourists. And up here, where there still are so few tourists, 
people really still do go out of their way to help you and to try and assist you to maybe chat you up in a restaurant or a bar and you get to meet people and uh, just get a little bit of a different view on Japan than you do if you're just in Tokyo, Kyoto, Hiroshima, places like that, as, as great as those places are. Since I just got back from this big trip, I really wanted to get back up the mountain. Now it's spring and so the snow is not great. It's really wet and slushy and dirty and it makes climbing kind of a pain because you're always slipping and sinking in. But despite those mid-spring conditions, it's still so great to be back up here. It's now late afternoon and the cherry blossoms up here in Morioka and Iwate are in full bloom right now. So I want to head back down the mountain where there's still a little bit of time to check out the cherry blossoms. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that when you do visit Japan, you take the time to come up to some undiscovered area like Iwate and see some places more off the beaten track, even if most of your trip is in the greatest hits of Japan areas, which of course are nice too. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the trails.